You know that crap. You don't like that <laughs> one? No. Tasha hates that one, too. I don't like it. Why? <laughs> don't like it. I don't like either one of y'all. Mm -mm. That song is so good. Mm -mm. That's Four Nine Blondes? Mm-hmm. What's up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. What's up? I was just sitting here thinking, what can I do from the 90s? That, well, that, you did it. Yeah. Why do you not like that song? I don't know. I don't know. You can't not like it without a reason. I'm, I'm taking a stance here. I, I don't think I like the lyrical content of it, just the what's going on thing. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Great Measures. My name is Richard. This is Judson, and I'm about to fight. Uh. <laughs> so the girl that sings and the, and the, the lead girl in that mm -hmm. reminds me. So I should not say this. Great Measures. I should not say this, but reminds me. She had big dreads, and she was just a big, scary-looking girl. It reminds me of these scary people in the hippie scene sometimes. They're just abrasive, and they, this is their scene. And, oh, what's going on? Just whatever, dude. No. I mean, it's pretty. The chords are pretty, and the little melody's pretty, but no, nah, I don't dig it. Shut it's up. like I can smell her or something. Shut whatever. up. No, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares what you have to say. <laughs> uh, so it's been a while. I think we've only done... It's been a while. Yeah, we're doing Stain today. <laughs> uh, we've only done one corn song, right? Mm -hmm. We did Freak on a Leash. You watched the video. Mm -hmm. And then we haven't done any corn since. Mm -mm. So we're going to revisit corn today. 2003. The song is called Did My Time. Um, it was released as a single, and it was on the... Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, Cradle of Life soundtrack, Cradle of Life soundtrack. And then it later got put on, later that year in 2003, it got put on their album, Take a Look in the Mirror, Korn's album, Take a Look in the Mirror. Okay. Uh, it's their second most played song live behind Y'all Want a Single. You might, do you know Y'all Want a Single? Mm, I, I didn't get into Korn. We might have to do Y'all Want a Single too. That was, that's a fun one. Um... I really like this song. It, I remember when it came out, it was kind of, it fit the things I was looking for at that time. Because hmm. I was like 16, 17 years old, and it just kind of fit. Okay. Maybe it aged well. We'll see. Mm -hmm. What's it called again? Did My Time. Did My Time. Corn. Yep. Okay. Let's do it. All right, Did My Time by Korn from 2003. Proceed, Richard.
Let's hear it. I was never a big corn fan. Uh-huh. And I don't remember why, other than just, like, like we talked before, about just being a snob about music and thinking that what I liked was good and you had this idea of... Uh, if you like certain bands, you, you, for some reason, there was this, it's like a team thing. Sure. Um, and the teams that I was on musically didn't like Corn. Right. I guess. And I, but I, and I really don't, I've never heard this song. I don't know a lot about Corn. Um, but man, what they're doing on the low end there is so good. <laughs> it's so good. I mean, the bass player is is the thing I'm listening to. Yeah. The drummer's bad, too. Mm-hmm. But the bass player's just playing some cool stuff, and the tone of his his bass is cool. Like, they're really able to do a lot musically. The bass is very, the, the bass guitar is very percussive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, even when his tone, when, when you hear his tone, like, it's so... Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just all the little stuff that they were doing, the don't run, don't run, don't run. You know, I could see how Corn would have influenced a lot of the bands that came in the 2000s because they were playing in the 90s. Definitely, right? yeah. But how a lot of that stuff uh, and even heavier music could have been influenced, especially on the bass end. Yeah. Um, I know it's a band we haven't done yet, but there's a. I'm trying to make this simple, but uh, there's a a band from the mid 2000s that went on into the 2010s, uh, up until well, they're still going now, but uh, they're called Suicide Silence, and their guitarist or one of their guitarists, uh, I think his name is Garza, Chris Chris Garza, maybe. You know, he he cites like they are. They're one of the, I guess you'd call them the founding fathers of early deathcore in the mid 2000s. Uh, and he cites Corn as like Corn is his band. I mean that's like that's the reason he started playing music. And the, you know I, I don't want to speak for him or whatever, but like he's got a podcast and you can you know he's he's constantly referencing Corn and and their their sound. Um, so yes, like I think you're 100 percent right. Like he, they influenced a lot of people. Yeah, man, that's really thick sounding. It's yeah. So, uh, and I think the story goes heavy. that song was not fully written on the previous album or for the previous album. It had, they hadn't fully completed it yet, and the produce, producer of the previous album hated it. And they kind of scratched it and put it off to the side, and then they ended up finishing it, and people from the Laura Croft movie came across it, heard it, and they were like, we got to have that on our soundtrack. Hmm. I think that's how that goes. I may be missing a few moments or pieces in there, but... Well, I mean, I guess his his voice could throw me off and when he says the word, man, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, but I, but I, I remember that being sort of his, th- his, sort of his yeah, thing. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I always, um, man, I could be contradictory in saying this, but, but the whole singing about using the me and you and I sure. too much sure gets gets to me. I can see. To yeah. me. To me. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just a... I, I think mean, it was just a part of that era and a part of that yeah, genre. Yeah, That's yeah. just what it was. yeah. But then again, you know, you, you are singing about about how you feel about things. I mean, that's what this song is about, his his struggle with anger. Maybe, yeah. What do you hear it as? I think it's pretty broad. I, I, he may have had a specific thing in mind, but I think it could fit a lot of different scenarios. He just mentions anger. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is he saying in there? Uh, What is he saying in the chorus? Uh, I am the one who chose my path. Uh huh. I the am the line. one who couldn't last. Yeah. So that that 
it seems like to me it's it's a an idea of realizing that you you can't fight those things emotions like anger and anxiety and all that kind of stuff. Are we boring you? No, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> um, you can't fight those kinds of things. But if you spend, if a person, if I spend my life trying to fight them, I lose every time. You can't battle, like, you can't run away from these things. You have to sort of let them come, deal with them, and move on, right? So maybe that's what he's meaning by that. Maybe. What else do you got? Yeah, I think that's uh, I just I think it it's more of an individual it fits what that person hears or or how that person interprets the song. The listener interprets the song. That's a cop out. It is a cop out, but it's I don't know that it's about a specific thing. I mean, I, yes, I can see the anger. Um I think, you know, it's it's that 2000s new metal angst I mean it that's just mm -hmm. like that sums it up to me I mean the, the anger is changing me and yeah. everything bothers me <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't have some sort of philosophical breakdown of it or or way of of I can see it dissecting just, it I just I can see it just illuminating a way of thinking a way of understanding so so this song is about a particular lens that someone could could and does look through on a on a on a, on, a, on a, a life basis in some way or another it's not particular about a situation, so to speak, other than the situation that humans allow themselves to, or punishment they put themselves through emotionally or in some kind of way, right? Maybe it's just illuminating the, the, uh, the, 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 the problem, or not the probability, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the, the way that we allow ourselves to, it's just sort of illuminating an emotion. So he's saying me, my, he's saying my, and he's he's talking about how, you know, it's not going to get him all the way. Maybe it's just about that, you know, just realizing that you can't be eaten up by a particular emotion that's on the side of anger. Especially or, a negative one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe. Maybe. What's the name of the song again? Did My Time. Yeah, so, you know, maybe that's what it is, is, is re the realization that I've, I've given too much of my energy and too much of my life to this particular, you can call it negative emotion or state of being, maybe. Um, and uh, I'm not going to let it have my anymore. I was... Uh... I'm thinking about why this song resonated with me and the time in my life that that was. And I was, I want to say, like, people came to my house to rip or burn CDs. Like, that was just, because I had, I don't know, one of the lime wire or Mm -hmm. Something I don't know. Something that I was yeah. pirating music. You were the dealer. You were doing the illegal stuff. Yeah, and I had you know the big stacks, the rings of of blank the CDs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and at one point, because I the that tower. Would, yeah, the tower. That would have been two thousand. That's two thousand three. So that would have been my junior year of high school. And that song came out in July, so going into my junior, no, going into my senior year of high school. And the last two years of, of high school playing football, I got assigned with burning the pregame hmm. music right. CD. Yeah. Uh, and I remember putting that song on there. Hmm. 
Why did you put it on there? Just because you liked it. I liked it, and it it just it's got some some of that low end, some yeah. upbeat the upbeat verse. Uh, it's it's got a it's got a kick to it, and it kind of it's, it's got a bridge. It's kind of pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a sucker for a bridge. Um, yeah, I just I always try to think about if somebody when I'm listening to a song for the first time, what would people be all screaming out lyrically to try to know what the feeling is that is whether or not it's being conveyed in that way. Right. What people are hearing. Mm -hmm. And there's a positive message in this song, I think. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder where the origin, what the origin of their name is. It's a good question. I don't know. What's the origin of the name Karn? Somebody tell me. Let me know. <laughs> I hate you so <laughs> so, But I mean, it's really cool. It's a cool Because the K is backwards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, or the R is backwards. Is the R is backwards? Yeah, I think you're right. It's the R is backwards. And um, so it's got its got its own, I, I, I'd be interested. And, you know, any band that can, can stick with a one word name nowadays is, is pretty, if you can find something like that. Yeah. It's true. You know, they've all been pretty used up. I mean, not, they've not all been used up, but you know what I'm saying. Right. It's yeah. hard to find a band name that's not. Especially one that sticks and resonates with people. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. We are Great Measures. My name is Richard. This is Judson. That was. That's me. Did My Time by Corn. Mm -hmm. I hate you. Great Measures. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, everybody.